Hello, so this video is going to go through using point clouds in Revit, um, but I wanted to start actually quickly showing this open source tool called Cloud Compare. Um, it's a really neat free open source tool that processes point clouds of all sorts of different f uh, file formats. <laughs> um, and it's really powerful and so this is an example of a scan that I'm going to use for the demo. This was a scan that was done in an apartment building. You can see there's all this sort of noise out here which is pretty typical when you're uh, doing a scan. Um, and what you can do in Cloud Compare is uh, clean, clean it up. So you can see here there's actually each of these is a different scan within this uh, apartment and each of these scans itself is nearly 12 million points. So there's a lot of points. Uh, you know, if I'm trying to navigate around this, it's it's very uh, kind of choppy and slow. You can see I just try to rotate it, and now I get the I get the spinning wheel of death. Um, but anyway, once you kind of clean that up, you basically get something like this. And there's all sorts of tools that are uh, good in Cloud Compare for cleaning things. So you can go to Edit Subsample and begin to kind of like remove points based on uh, spacing and you can there's some tools here that'll kind of clean out uh, noise um, things like that so there, this is a, a tool that there's a lot of documentation on it um, it's really there's a lot you can do um, and it's free so it's really cool so I just wanted to show that I actually had kind of you know used this to clean up the point cloud before I brought it into Revit so that it was a little bit lighter a lot lighter actually. Um, Alright, so here we are in Revit. Um, I basically started a new project uh, and I brought in, just to save some time in the video, I had inserted some families just from the Revit default library um, that I'll be using a little bit later on. So the first step you'd want to do is come to insert point cloud, find your point cloud, um, I'm going to leave it center to center. I don't really have anything that I'm trying to align it to or anything. I'm really just starting from scratch, so I can leave this a center to center. You'll notice there's, in, I'm using Revit 2019, and it'll only accept Revit kind of file formats for, for point clouds. Older versions of Revit will allow you to bring in a, a, a more native uh, point cloud file format, um, and there's an indexer that will kind of process it for you. Uh, Revit decided, or Autodesk decided to get rid of that in 2019. Essentially it's shifted into the recap. So there's a product called recap that's specific for point clouds um, and it's free and you can kind of basically they have a better indexer in there and so their kind of uh, suggestion is to is to use that instead. Basically another way for them to force you into another one of their tools. <laughs> um, all right so you have your your point cloud it's br been brought in and maybe one of the first things we'll want to do actually is, um, in this case, the levels. I'm going to make this a ground floor and then um, I'm going to make a level because this apartment unit happens to be on the second floor. So I'm going to move this up. So we can just kind of eyeball it. I'm not working off of any, you know, I'm, I'm really assuming that you don't even have any 2D drawings or anything. You're really just starting from scratch. Um, so these points here are basically, I don't have any th any of the other, I only have one level, so I don't see the exterior of the building. I'm only seeing the interior surfaces. So this is kind of like the, f this level is basically the finished floor. And what I probably want to do also is rotate this to be orthogonal, just to make it a little bit easier to work with. So I'm just going to come in here, rotate, I'm gonna try to get as, as close as I can. Looks pretty good. I'm actually going to Right, whoops, I'm going to rotate this 180. So this is kind of like your entry hall, and there's a, you know, a bedroom, a living room, kitchen, bathroom. 
Um, once you have your, your model in place, I'm actually just going to check real quick. Uh, let's just throw like a wall in here to see how straight this is. Looks pretty good. All right. So once you have your, your model kind of placed, you probably want to pin it so that you don't accidentally move it. And a few things you'll want to kind of quickly go through. Uh, usually in a 3D view, let's throw a section box. I'm actually going to click on that and crop that section box. And so if I cut through the top here, now we can kind of see into the space. Um, see here, we're actually kind of cutting through a light. Um, and in this case, we have RGB values with the scan. This was done with a BLK scanner. Uh, so we actually kind of see almost like a photographic-like representation, uh, which is pretty cool. So um, there's a few things within the visibility graphics. So I'm just going to hit VV. If you come to point clouds here, um, you'll notice that there's uh, this option here called color mode. So RGB. It looks just kind of like this photographic representation, single color. Um, it's just a single color. <laughs> uh, so these are pretty self-explanatory. Well, some of these aren't. Um, intensity is, uh, from what I understand, it's basically how far away something was from the from the scanner. Um, so it just helps to kind of give some definition. Um, and then there's normals, which is really useful in 2D views, I find, um, which will kind of color things by the, the surface uh, in which direction the surface is facing. So for 3D views, I actually kind of prefer to just keep it in RGB as I'm working. And then in the 2D view here, I'm actually going to go back to that dialog and change this to, this is a little distracting for me right now, so what I'm going to do is change this to normals. And so now this is a little bit easier to work with as I'm going to go through and be sort of tracing over this, um, these items here. All right, so first I'm just going to throw a floor in here. I'm just because I know this is part of a larger building, I'm just going to make a slab that kind of extends. Essentially, this is the exterior wall here, and this is kind of a, a corner of the building. So there's a window here, and some windows along this wall here. Um, sure, so I'm just going to go with that for now. One thing that's kind of cool that you'll see here is you can begin to see some of the floor deviation. So this is the flat surface, and we'll see that the point cloud uh, you can sort of s sort of tell basically wherever we're seeing white right now is essentially uh, where the floor is a little bit lower. So we can tell that the living room might be a little bit lower than some of these other spaces. Um, you can also see this in a 3D view as well. Oh, maybe not as well as in the 2D, but uh, if we wanted to kind of there's you know there's tools specifically for floor for doing floor deviation with point clouds not so much in Revit um, it's usually kind of a more specialized tool but you can kind of do a poor man's version of a floor deviation by moving the floor up and down a little bit and kind of seeing where the high points and low points are so here we can see that the floor in the kitchen is a little bit higher so I just moved the floor up a little bit um, which makes sense because in this case the the kitchen had some linoleum flooring on it, which basically uh, would, had gone over the original wood flooring. So it makes sense that the kitchen floor is a little bit higher up. Um, it looks like there's also a little ridge here. So you can probably assume that there's a, a beam that runs under under here uh, that's kind of kept that high. Then this is a, this is, you know, this is like a hundred year old building. So um, you'll see a lot of uh, floor deviation in, in older buildings in particular. Um, especially when you're working on a larger floor plate. We're working on a very, fall, uh, very small floor plate in this example, but when you're working with large existing buildings, you'll see tons of deviation uh, in, in, much the, in a lot of the older buildings. All right, so I'm just going to move this back to zero for now. And we can start on the walls. So I have this exterior wall here. And one thing that's kind of neat that you'll find as you're, as you're working with point clouds is you'll see all these things that might not have been readily apparent. Um, 
So for example, we see here that this wall actually sits in a little bit from these other ones here. So we can kind of assume that this is probably furred out and there's maybe some plumbing in here, or, uh, some a little, you know, uh, chase wall or something in this in this wall here that's making it uh, different than the other ones. Um, a few other things we'll notice is that there's uh, kind of this elevated slab here below the below the oven. So these are little things that are really helpful to to see in the point cloud um, as you're working with them. So let's go back and start our walls. I'm just gonna so this is like a brick building, so I'm just gonna use like a, a standard brick exterior wall. We'll do a brick on CMU. I'm just gonna kinda basically, you know, this edge here is our interior. So I'm gonna make sure that this is set to finish face interior. And I'm just gonna gonna go around. I'll come back later and look to make sure that it's somewhat accurate. Revit's probably not going to like me if I do a super small wall here, so I'm just going to overshoot it for now and then come back and adjust it later. And this wall kind of continues here, so I'm just going to let it go. Um, same thing here, just kind of extend it a little bit. As we're going, one thing we might want to do, I'm just going to turn this into a I want to see these walls a little bit. And actually, I'm going to move this so that the wall goes down to the ground floor. This is the exterior wall and kind of continues up. I'll just leave it going up to level three for now. Um, all right, so, so we can kind of see in our 3D view, we have that wall that roughly aligns. I might come back and want to align this better. So one thing that would probably be good as we're trying to align to the point cloud is to uh, turn the transparency and walls up to, let's say, 50. So what this does is it allows us to see through and um, now we can come through and kind of align things a little bit better. And we could also, this allows us to see where our windows and, and doors are as we're, as we're kind of drawing all the walls. So then we might come in and draw um, some of the interior walls. And as we're doing this, we'll be able to see kind of like where things aren't square, where they are. This is actually like fairly square for an older building. Maybe it, maybe this wall's a little bit off a of square. So if I was, uh, you know, if I want to be super accurate, I can kind of try to capture that slightly off a of 90. Again, trying to capture these little things that are slightly off. This wall here we can tell is actually a little bit bowed. Um, so if we were being really particular we can kind of model that slight curve into that wall. But I'm just going to be moving quickly here. I'm not going to model all the walls. I think you get the, the gist of, of how this would go. I'm going to pull that to a line. Funny condition there, but um, so now we can come in and now by the by the walls being 50% transparent, kind of allows us to see um, some of these other things. So maybe there's a there's roughly like a 30 inch door here. And we can even see and plan like the the profile of the the molding around the door, which is pretty neat. If we wanted to, we can go in and kind of detail that a little bit. Um, we're not going to do that in this video. So we can go in and do things like the doors and this window. I believe this is probably going to be flipped because we have a big sill that's on the inside. Um, so we come to the north view, for example, and we can see how we might want to better align this. So for example, the sill height, 
would actually be closer to two feet. And I might, looks like maybe I need to slide this over a little bit. Maybe some, or I may need to adjust the width of the, of the window. Uh, but anyway, you kind of get the idea. You can come into your elevation views and start to start to align things like the windows and things like that. Um, and then we can also use this as a as a way for placing things like the toilet. So if I were to come here and search for a toilet, I can go back to my plan view. Oh, this is a wall-based toilet, so I need to make a wall. So I'll actually, you kind of notice here that there's a chase wall. So I'm just going to model that as like a thicker wall, just for the sake of speed. And then I'll come back. Now I can place that toilet on the wall. Um, so as you go, you know, the idea is you're, you're kind of constantly using the point cloud to align things, and, and the nice thing about this is we kind of completely skip the step of, of having to do any sort of 2D drafting of the existing plans or anything like that. Um, in particular, if you don't, you know, if, if you have a case where you don't have them. Um, and essentially, if, if we were to continue on, we get to something like this, um, where we have all our, all our windows and all the walls and everything looks pretty aligned and we can begin to um, we'd be able to see if there's anything that is like really off but everything's pretty close here there are some areas here where I knew there were closets that I just kinda knew the dimensions of and had written them down um, rather than try to get a scan inside each of these little uh, closets so it's not super critical in this case um, alright so that's the gist of using point clouds in Revit